are we online or not? No, I mean, no, 45 not seconds. Yet. Not yet, okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Roberta, the floor is yours. Okay. So welcome again to this Peers lecture. Uh, so the special session on uh, organized by the Papers in Regional Science uh, Journal. Um, this morning, unfortunately, we had some technical problems, uh, which were brilliantly solved uh, in the meantime. But the funny story was that we did not realize until I uh, did not, let's say, invite Rosella to speak. So I presented her uh, to myself and to her. So I'm, it's better if I, let's say, do that again. Um, well, as I was saying this morning, I'm particularly pleased for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that we have, a, I think, a very interesting keynote speaker. Uh, um, and the second is that I am uh, really pleased that this tradition of having keynote uh, uh, lectures uh, organized by uh, journals in general, uh, and this in case papers in regional science, is, let's say, going on. Uh, and this is because we uh, gather uh, very good speakers and on uh, themes that are at the frontier. Before I introduce the theme, I would like to introduce the, the speaker. Um, so as I said, this is Professor Rosella Nicolini, uh, which is currently, who is currently Associate Professor of Applied Economics at the Universitat Autonoma de Barcelona. Uh, and she coordinates there uh, a PhD program in Applied Economics. Uh, uh, Rosella got her PhD at the Université Calotolique de Louvain, uh, and uh, she did a PhD that was a, a finalist for the annual prize of the Committee of Regions. Um, she is counselor at large of the Regional Science Association International, so it means that she belongs to the board of the Regional Science Association International, so she is mu much involved in uh, uh, also managing our associations, and I say associations because she's also the executive director of ERSA. So she holds and she has uh, prominent positions, and we have to thank her because this is all voluntary, on voluntary basis. Uh, she's also one of the editors of Papers in Regional Science, and she's associate editor of the French-speaking speaking section journal, one of the most renowned journals since, uh, uh, because it's an old journal, it's the Revue, uh, um, Revue de Economique Regionale uh, et Urbaine, pardon, uh, pour la pronunciation. Uh, and she's also a member uh, of the editorial board of Regional Science Policy and Practice and Investigaciones Regionales, which is the journal of the flagship journal of the Spanish section. Um, she has been visiting professors in different universities around the world, Boston University, Universities of South Wales, and uh, Greta in Bordeaux. Uh, she uh, studies mainly determinants of location for persons or business activity from a regional perspective. And she is the author of many important uh, publications in different studies. So I am delighted to present, uh, uh, I am delighted to have Rosella with us also because she's presenting a very interesting issue uh, and theme, which is the spatial distribution of population and especially in a, in a uh, future perspective. So thank you, Rosella. Sorry for 
these uh, problems that you had to wait and uh, some other uh, hours in order to deliver your speech. I know that when you are there, the, the, the nervosity and the, uh, and the um, pressure, uh, the blood pressure goes up. So sorry for making, the, making you do this twice, but we are delighted to have you. So Rosella, the floor is yours. Take your time. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, thank you very much for having me and sorry for the different problem we had this morning for the sections, okay? So uh, I try to do my best to, to uh, I would say, to be um, worth about uh, your attentions in particular for persons that uh, join us this afternoon. So as uh, Roberta said, my presentation is about something that I have been studying since a while at this moment, I am sharing my uh, slides with you. I hope that in a second you can see them. Okay. I hope that in a second it could be available. I'm making yes. them to yes. the screen. Great. The screen. So. That's fine. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. We are at the first. Uh, at the first uh, yes, we slide. Are. We are. Very yes, we well. Are. Very well. Very well. So in the, in the presentation, as was saying, is about the study of determinants of population distribution. And this study about population distributions is about what I have been investigating with several colleagues, you will see. And so it's making a little bit of a point, where do we stand, so what we know, and to which extent what we know will allow us to forecast, to have some idea what could happen in the future. In particular, why? Because um, population distributions and understanding why people decide to live in a specific place rather than another entails several, several consequences from social, economic, sustainability, environmental issues. And therefore, all these themes, all these, um, I would say, elements are fundamental, I, I think, for our society eh? and for the general welfare. So, um, the first point I would like to focus is why I am focusing on populations and not usually on just employment, which is something that is very, very well known in the literature. Usually we have, okay, what is important in spatial uh, um, economics, generally speaking, is so where workers go, what can be the interest or what is going on if we move, I don't know, an activity in another place. And this is extremely important, uh, making this difference for, between population and employment, in particular, when we are referring to the post-COVID situation, which is exactly what I will touch in the, at, at the end of it. Okay, so for that reason, um, exploring individual location pattern and the understanding which are the challenging of our society. I have just uh, uh, mentioned that I am focusing on population and not just an employment. Why? Is it relevant uh, point or is it just uh, something that is a curiosity? I think that is a relevant point in particular if we focus on uh, developed society, um, I would say Europe, United States. And the reason is the following. If we look at you know, the pyramid of demographic uh, composition of a worldwide population, uh, these are data I downloaded um, a few weeks ago before they are updated. Uh, what we have is exactly that overall, uh, the population, the demography of the population as a sort of pyramid shape, uh, not exactly well shaped, but anyway, pyramid. what does it imply this thing for the world? It implies generally speaking that this is a sort of sustainability in the intergenerational potential transfer. What does it mean? Usually, I'm not going into the details, but usually uh, persons that are in more a in the aged um, uh, cells here, usually benefits in a way or the other of support from the youngest ones, and in particular, the one in the um, working age. So if we think to our, for instance, welfare systems, pension and so on, what happens is that nowadays retired people enjoy their pension because we have a sort of mass of um, working people paying for them and so on. The fact to have a standard pyramid like that implies that this is sustainable eh? because the young generation are entering and then progressively this system can be supported. This is the world. 
if we move to Europe, what happens? This is Europe, but if uh, I picture, I had to picture United States and other developing country, it's the same, okay? And if you go to the, this website, you can also check your country and check exactly the forecast for your country and, you know, have more curiosity about that. Anyway, when we focus on Europe, what we see that this pyramid shape um, is not there. I mean, we have this sort of a big bunch of working age populations that can well support, if you want, the benefits for the pensions and uh, what else for aged people. But then the youngest cohort, the youngest generation, if we keep the same systems of uh, uh, intergenerational support, mm, would not be uh, maintained in the long run because the new generation are quantitatively less than earlier. Therefore, if we think about uh, populations of working class, or working class, sorry, employed and working persons, uh, what we can think is that something has to be distinguished and disentangled because they are not exactly the same. And if we not just look at this graph, but we do at some numbers, if we look at uh, the shares in, in Europe, a population that is not working over the total amount of population is around 41%, more or less. And if we are even more precise, so we take the percentage between the population that is not working, so younger people, less than 15, and population uh, of people with more than 64 over the working age population, which is usually 15, 64, the percentage goes up, goes up around 50. Uh, 56 up to France, which is really uh, the maximum, which is 60%. Conclusion, which is the problem? The problem is that uh, we are living in an aged society to a certain way. Numbers are there. And if we look at just uh, location determinant for employee or potential people searching for job of any other persons that uh, um, are, are active, uh, we are basically focusing on preferences, or focusing on some issue on a very limited share of our populations. And therefore, is the result we cannot uh, be so enlarged, so general, and maybe we can miss something which is extremely important to understand exactly uh, what society or uh, what uh, location um, requires, or what are the characteristics of these locations, what are the needs for some group of people, and therefore, you know, the, the questions and even idea can be exactly more extensive. So said that to justify, I hope to convince you that working with population deserves and make a difference between population and employment is extremely important if we focus exactly on our society, uh, what, what I have been working and what I feel interesting is exactly to look at the, the spatial dimension, and in particular look at the rich or urban dimension. Um, what are the difficulties or uh, similarity between two spatial approach? Itself, as you know very well, um, models and uh, setting frameworks we use for regional and urban can be more or less, I'm not saying the same, but it is a nice, a nice definition in the book by Brackman says that, uh, is Brackman is also, that um, regional economics and urban economics for some dimension are fractal. So what does imply? The mechanism driving some effects are basically identical. The only big problem, but it is a big problem if, if uh, is uh, when uh, we consider the regional dimension, we have to struggle with heterogeneity much more than in the case of urban economics. Why? Because in the regional dimension itself, the structure of the space is less uniform. We have rural area joined with urban area, and therefore we work with regional dimension. We need to put more emphasis over this heterogeneity. And the working with heterogeneity or try to control or model for it is not exactly an um, easy challenge. Anyway, uh, I have been working in both of issues. And overall, the first message I, I got and what I want to share with you is that some elements are shared by these two dimensions, but in my opinion, the regional dimension itself open a windows 
on, uh, on more, I would say, interesting research question, but also uh, question issues that we need to go take into account that um, have no easy answer. So to analyze the spatial distribution of population across uh, space, um, how usually literature uh, proposes. Usually, basically, we have uh, two elements to put together. One is the spatial structure. So first, uh, try to identify which is the spatial structure of the space. Uh, this is not easy at all, because you know very well that uh, giving a structure to the space is one of the most complicated issues tackled. And second, matching with the issue of individual preferences. We have a structure, but also individual, you know, in this structure, try to maximize their own preferences. One device that has been definitely used and uh, exploited to try to match these two dimensions in order to give a, you know, uh, insightful result is to think about the idea of accessibility. So what does it mean, the idea of accessibility? Usually individual uh, try to settle according to their preferences and according also to their budget constraints to places that are very, for them, very easy to have access to. And so therefore my residence will be in a place because then I need to move in another for work purposes or for uh, um, leisure purposes. And then is easy access, easy access in different manners with a very nice network, transport network, but also, you know, working distance with environmental friendly uh, systems and so on and so on. So the idea of accessibility is a very nice device to join these two dimensions. Then the second point is the way this issue has been completely tackled. And this issue is being done with a, a um, kind of empirical models. And these empirical models on one side are working with parametric kind of estimations and the other one that has been done with Bayesian estimation. Uh, what the nice thing of the Bayesian estimation rather than the parametric one is that Bayesian estimations in Bayesian kind of uh, econometrics allows for shaping better and having much more flexibility in the um, way to model preferences and a way to take into account some other issue associated with preferences that the parametric classical frequency system um, do, uh, does not allow. Uh, so, as I have uh, just mentioned, the regional dimension is richer, but we have a problem because in the regional dimension, we have a cohabitation between what is the rural and the urban dimension. And we need to take into account that. The idea to deal with two elements with a lot of uh, heterogeneity makes it very difficult to find a way to model distribution of population over there. And uh, in the past, there has been an extensive work by several persons, one of them, which has several contributions in understanding how uh, population distribute at regional level. This is John Parr, and he has several distribution, several paper about population distribution. And John Parr has a fundamental distribution, fundamental contribution in identifying the best function of distributions, which is in his uh, setting, even the log normal and gamma function. I'm not going into the details, but just to explain to you that both log normal and gamma are two kind of functions that allow well to model inequalities inside each grid of spatial unity we can use. And therefore different from other kind of distribution, these two kind of uh, functions are really optimal to the system. In each period, we can introduce inequality. We cannot say that we can say something more for the fact that uh, each spatial unit that could be a census, could be a city, could be whatever. Um, the population is over there. And instead, the function itself helped me to model that point. So the contribution of John Parr is really important. And then beyond all that, the accessibility works with the functional distance. Okay, so as I told you, the idea of accessibility allows me to say I am more interested or less interest. And then I have a sort of distance that is generally connecting me to the place I want to go, where a place I'm interested to go. And therefore, the big problem is how to measure this distance. Kilometers, uh, travel time, 
a sort of ratio between the two or a function of distance, this is not clear. And in the literature, we have a lot of information, a lot of study working on that point. And then this has been, so the first three points I have here has been the basic kind of analysis that has been done, I would say, 80s and uh, beginning of 90s. But rather, what really researcher was able to identify is that the uh, distance itself does not help a lot uh, to identify and being able to approximate the spatial distribution of population nowadays. Something more getting. And something more is associated with the preferences of people. And so maybe I am interested to live here because I have a very nice spice drop close to me that bring me exactly uh, to my place of work. But of course, I don't like this neighborhood, for instance, because you know uh, the ethnic composition of this neighborhood is not what I would like to live in because I feel sure or because criminality is huge and so on. So other factors become important. And this is at the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s. The reason this is send a very nice overview in the end book by Giorgio Toppa and it's the new in 2015, which makes this really a nice overview about other factors influencing population population, both a regional and urban uh, dimension. And in particular, there are three important factors. One, income, education, and ethnic composition. Very important is that uh, income and education, uh, one can imagine that uh, go jointly. Uh, higher educated people can have more income. Uh, this is not taken for granted. Okay, the two issues are not absolutely identical, and therefore it's important. And in the literature, results are different uh, when we work with income and education. And in particular, um, some contribution in which they join them sometimes are not exempted by some bias or some errors to be considered. This is what has been done. And uh, then at the end of this uh, thousand, there is a rising situation according to which uh, we need to improve a little bit the way to model this interaction between distance and preferences. And this is some work I have done with some other colleagues. In particular, don't thinking of the distribution uh, itself uh, as a parameterization, but thinking of a distribution of population. And this idea of distribution of population density are some two important. The first one is about uh, the idea of considering that preferences works in the standard way of measuring them as in um, economics, okay? Association of preferences, idea of what I want to know. And then the distance from a place becomes a part of these preferences. And therefore, becoming a part of these preferences means that it enters itself into a movement, in a, in a movement, in a combination of factors that allows exactly to pick up some important um, combination between what is my idea of ethnic preferences with the distance. And going that, doing that, what we are able is we are able to identify which is the idea of spatial segregations. So the fact that to be able to make this story of distance accessibility plus preferences make us exactly find out the way to be able to model or approximate the idea that places can be identical in terms of distance, but then the combinations of ethnic preferences are not exactly what they are taking for that. What we are also working, and then I will show you a brief overview, is exactly that working with sort of probabilistic approach, uh, we are also able to introduce in our setting the idea of memory. So what does imply? People change their mind, of course, and the experiences we had in the past affects our preferences today. And therefore, what happens? The decision I can take of location today are not exactly identical what I can I took 10 years ago or even, you know, 20 years ago, because then I updated, if you want, my uh, bunch of, um, of priors and therefore my bunch of priorities. And then uh, with this kind of approach, we are also able to find this relationship between the fact that I can take a uh, decision without taking care of my information baggage that I have over me, 
or I can do it with it. And we see that working with this Bayesian probabilistic approach allows us to, to have interesting things. Um, what I was saying to you is that some work I have done with some colleagues, in particular the probabilistic approach is something that we have developed with the gamma gamma function where we show in the tradition to be more efficient to explain the idea of accessibility. In another paper, we are working, we worked also in producing the individual interaction between um, people uh, living the same sex track, and in particular, the best model to consider this interaction in a way to be able to achieve the final, the final results, so understanding which is the distributions, and also the historical dimension. The historical dimension is exactly extremely important, and we will see after in a second uh, what I mean, okay? So this is an example of a screenshot of our results for which I can I can uh, be more concrete about what is important of distance and all the other dimensions. Um, these are 50 level data, census track data. As I told you, the kind of models uh, can be applied no matter which is a special administrative unit. Um, we have to take care of the way to model them. But anyway, in both the uh, picture here, what we have uh, are the red points are exactly the density, the actual true value of density of population, here city level, in the other part census track level, according to the distance. This was an exercise we did for Massachusetts, and uh, we took Boston as a center. Okay, so this is distance from Boston, and this is the point of, of density of, of, uh, of When uh, we have this uh, um, black triangle with a down. Uh, or, uh, this black triangle, what is? This is the approximation we can have of a population distribution, just taking into account the distance from Boston. And as we see that if we take account just the distance from Boston, our model is not performing well, or at least is missing in particular, which are the Q. Instead, the red, the blue triangle are the ones in which we are approximating the distribution of population, in particular, when we are considering distance from Boston, and in this case, the ethnic composition, okay, of a spatial unit. And we see that the quality of the approximation is definitely better. This better approximation is uh, even better, if you want, if we go to the census track dimension. This is city level, so there were basically single tone, and we have not sort of huge continuity because this was the largest city in, in Massachusetts. The other one is Massachusetts all census track data are denser, and the results are really more important. You know, because when we are denser data, distribution itself uh, of, uh, sorry, the distance from Boston itself is unable to capture, in particular, the Q. We instead, when we are making uh, the introduction on other factors, uh, is definitely important. It is definitely relevant. And you see our triangle, if are not picking everything, definitely are working better. If we look at this, uh, just taking into account this combination between distance and preferences working with ethnic and uh, income. In particular, in the case of Massachusetts, Passa segregation is uh, more from income and uh, ethnic dimension. Some other country does not work like that. And therefore, location distance, location decision are not just from this, depending on distance, but also depends from the ethnic composition of each name. The story of the uh, memory. Here we have a sort of uh, graph coming back a little bit to the previous one, but instead of having just one year, the previous one was 2000, here we have uh, um, basically, I'm saying more than one century. And what happens here is very important. Here we have, uh, the, again, the coefficient of a distribution, a relevance of distribution of the distance of Boston, just with the model with distance, which is the blue one. And then we have the coefficient of distance uh, when we introduce the other factors. Eh? ethnic distribution, and in particular here is the mix, eh, the composition, the ethnic composition of each place. Uh, we have uh, this uh, line, red and yellow, 
that is with the mixed plus distance. And the black one uh, uh, above is uh, just the coefficient we have when we have the mixed composition of a population. What we can learn here? Uh, distance, of course, from Boston is fundamental, but what happens is that from the 70s, the distance itself lost completely the relevance, and what becomes important are the mix, the ethnic mix, okay? But the impact of this ethnic mix is not whatever. We need to be careful to model it. Indeed, in this previous gra this graph on uh, this part of the screen I am um, signaling now, uh, we have a diffuse prior means that we are taking the decision of people considering without any previous experience. Instead, when we move on with this critical prior, when we make this approximation, we understand what we understand, we model it considering all the baggage of the previous uh, course of people living in Boston and in Massachusetts, and looking exactly at their behavior, so the way they search for places, which kind of experience we had in the past affected what happens nowadays. And what we have here is definitely more important. So without taking into account the history, making what has been done by people before me, it's quite complicated to give to each variable uh, the proper weight to a certain extent. Why? Because variable estimation try to absorb as much as possible, which is the relevance about uh, their uh, this, this historical effect. And when we take into account this historical effect, results does not change structurally, but what is is the size, the magnitude of estimated coefficient that changes. What does it mean? At this point, it makes clear that historical priors matter and history is definitely very important. Uh, what happens when we move to the urban dimension? When we move to the urban dimension itself, uh, uh, the story is more or like the same, saying that we have a center, we have a, a sort of special structures that could be monocentric or polycentric. We have advantages of working in particular nowadays with georeferences data, but again, I think from, uh, I would say again, 60s, 70s, the spatial urban structure is not sufficient to understand the population distribution at urban level. We need to add something more. Let's think just nowadays how monocentric city in the US or in Europe has a completely different distribution pattern of population. Um, I mean, so is somebody that is searching for the downtown in Los Angeles is not the same that is searching for the downtown in other places because searching for downtown implies to search for other, uh, I mean, so implies to search for, um, I mean, so people places where we have amenities and when we research uh, in downtown in Los Angeles, these amenities not. So this is different between which is Europe and Latin America, and in particular is completely different when we talk about uh, the other potential uh, places. Said so that, which kind of urban model we can use to um, in, approximate the urban dimension. In particular, we have the monocentric model and then we have the polycentric model. The monocentric model is exactly the standard model a la Boston, it's been very well known and diffused. And then we have a polycentric one, which is the model started by Philip Ogawa, and then we have a dated version in the Chronometrica 2002 by Rossi Ansberg. Also, when we work with urban dimension, we have parametric and no parametric issue. We have spillover, proximity. We have georeferenced data as well that make things very important and you know very pointed out, which are extremely important. And then at the end of the day, uh, we have uh, even at um, urban level the possibility to work with area, district, or neighborhood. We, with some colleagues, did an exercise for Barcelona because we had the possibility to work with Barcelona in particular uh, over time. And uh, what we uh, observe is a very nice, uh, uh, again, very nice issue. The same we had at regional level. Um, this is the distance from the core of Barcelona, which is Plaza Catalunya, and this is the price of urban uh, land. Uh, in the beginning of the centuries, 
we see that the price of a uh, close to Plaza Catalonia was extremely high, high. So, you know, the distance from the center was a really determinant for the population distribution. Instead, over time, even if the partial structure has been more or less the same, this has been an invest investment for, um, I, am, I would say, preserving and keeping the attractiveness of the center as a point of interest. So, no, no matter what happens in that extent, the, you know, the attractiveness of the center is basically down sloping. Eh? And nowadays we are really, um, there is a difference with respect, um, small difference with respect to other area of the town, but it's not so huge everywhere in the region. Why? As usual, for the instance, for the entry of some preferences associated with uh, ethnic issue as well. So Barcelona over time experienced a very huge entry of um, immigrations with uh, people uh, more qualified, less qualified, depending what has been uh, the story, uh, the story, the wave of, of migrations. And of course, then starting from them again, here we have a picturing of the preferences to settle close to the center, therefore the idea of accessibility, according to different group of people. And we see that are completely different, okay? Also in Barcelona, the difference uh, is not rather ethnical, but uh, in income. Hmm? Difference in income and education. But anyway, you know, as I told you, the model of US and the model of Europe is different. And even here in, uh, in, uh, in Barcelona, you know, in the recent times, we have these very different uh, preferences of people to, uh, to locate. And in particular, this different exacerbated in the 2000, uh, which was the year in which we had much, uh, much more um, migration, different group of migration, than coming to this point of today. That seems there is a sort of convergence. So what we know, so what literature tell us? Literature tell us the foolish, in, in my view, eh? and then uh, we can discuss the methodology data and so on. First issue. Uh, is true that accessibility is a nice way to model, okay? Uh, and second, um, depending which part of the, of the world that you are referring to, you can have interest in locating in a place in terms of, uh, um, you know, be closer to people, you, your same income or same location, or in other place, be close to people belonging to the uh, to your ethnic group, huh? belonging to your ethnic community. This is the standard issue. And this is what, what has been done up to now. Now, after our friend uh, COVID, what changes in the way we are, uh, we are working and the way we are thinking of? So in order means to introduce the second part and this part of reflection of the issues, I would like to, in to invite you to contribute to that point. And here we have a, a really a small question. I would like you to, um, to answer um, in the chat. May I would like to ask Roberta then to read me the chat if I am not able to have access to it. So, you know, as I told you, uh, what I, I told you just, you know, up to now is what is being done in the literature, literature and what is being done now. And say that distance is important, but also a neighborhood um, are important kind of neighborhood. I also told you the memory important a lot because um, you have preferences that are built over your past. Okay, nowadays, after the big shock you had, uh, we had, not just you, we all we had, what are your preferences? I mean, which are the features that you like the most in the, in the, in the, in the moment you have to choose to the, uh, where to live? Okay, thank you. Can you reply? Can you can you send it to by chat so that we can? Okay, so some answers: the close natural center to my workplace, green area in silence, from line. Distance to work in green area, green area, good neighbors, middle and field, distance to work. Tram. You know, this is very nice. 
so your answer are extremely really nice because basically your preferences your preferences does not I mean don't seem to have changed a lot <laughs> with respect to the past meaning that what exactly you are you are mentioning is connectivity green area and therefore the idea usually of accessibility and then part of your preferences, which is connected to the point of, um, I told you before, ethnic issue, education of income. What I am really uh, nice and, and uh, you know, uh, I see, uh, interested in seeing in your, in, your, uh, in your preferences is that uh, the, um, you know, segregation in terms of ethnic, or income or uh, education does not appear anymore, right? I see that there is a much more concern for green area um, and for, you know, spaces you can, you know, be close to your friend or be uh, close to your places in which you are, uh, you know, feel more comfortable. But what, what has been done up to now in the literature is not an issue anymore, okay? And, and this is exactly the, the problem to a certain extent or the challenge we are, uh, we are called uh, to face. Why? And, you know, if I am basically reviewing what has been uh, uh, done uh, up to now, is that uh, uh, there are several we challenges. Up five, uh, five minutes uh, so that we leave time Thanks. for discussion. This is for the discussion, of course. Uh, so we have, technically speaking, several contributions that have been done, in particular looking at uh, the urban uh, dimension, uh, what has been the consequences of COVID. But again, these consequences of COVID does not work with population itself, work with uh, employment, focus on employment. So there is a paper by Baron and co-authors uh, that technically speaking look at monocentric level, monocentric model, sorry, and what they find is that because of COVID at the center of the city, um, the demand of the space will drop and instead we will see demand for much more housing rooms. Uh, the center become less attractive as business center, economic impact. Then there is a study about the job loss, in particular, the job distraction uh, versus working from home. So people that are not able to smart work, um, basically are taking, uh, uh, I would say, the, 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 the challenge to have the sort of ancient model of working, so going to work daily and so on, no possibility to work for remote, and therefore there will be a little bit uh, of a preservation of their jobs, let's call it that. Instead, in the case you can have working from home, uh, then uh, the kind of job uh, can be to certain extent extract in the city, create elsewhere, and therefore <clears throat> working at remote distance. There is also an issue about gender dimension, but still working with people and uh, employment. Why? Uh, because, you know, since that uh, preliminary study, preliminary evidence, Working from home in, implies that women can uh, combine better their professional and private life, and therefore it's a very nice solution to that respect. But the end, we are still with working people. And, uh, you know, the questions about uh, the opportunity of keeping this kind of setting still working with, uh, you know, the fact for distance can be something important for um, moving to some rural environment or environment that are not very close to the city and therefore to a certain extent having, uh, I mean, having savings or in terms of um, of, uh, of um, renting, because you know, if you move far from the center, usually we have less, in, uh, less income to devote to renting. But of course, if the demand for places far from the center increases, then there will be, of course, an increase also in the rent over there. And therefore, we have this point. Even if, you know, usually studies say that working from home will not be fully work from home, on average, at least 20% would be full work days on place, okay? 
of course, what is important if we move to this kind of development is improving community, railway systems, uh, and therefore problem of eventually congestion. Imagine if you commute the day you have to go to work and everybody is doing the same, there could be plenty of congestion. And also the debate is about the face-to-face -face population communication. But everything you have here is everything that focus on employment, but not on population. And in particular, if we work on population, problems are completely different. And so if we look, for instance, at population, I was just thinking or having a look at some, uh, some contributions, what is the, the, the needs of this kind of people? But first of all, the uh, accessibility to basic healthcare system. So, you know, it's relevant. So the problem is exactly for this group of people, uh, the city, how to transform post-COVID given the potential way to be as way, the potentiality to have access to qualified healthcare system. And in particular, in the case, sometimes uh, means of transport has to be adapted because if we think people with probability of mobility and so on, the standard, you know, tramway, bus way and so on cannot be used. Very important socialization interactions. Okay, a lot of you, and there was one of the answers you put in the chat to be with friends. So, of course, what, what is important is the possibility to improve meeting points. Okay, and let's say parks, for instance, library, markets, whatever it is, because this position uh, of you know, get together, uh, gather together people is still important, and this goes beyond uh, the idea of employment itself. Uh, then one point, one drama at the uh, human level is the problem of gentrification. That the experience in particular places that was, uh, I mean, was a place of living uh, for people with, I would say, low or medium low income up to a certain point, but still these are places very centric with many amenities and before the arrival of Airbnb, basically what we need was push this person out of the places and then um, devote or transform this place as big as tourist space. In Barcelona exists, but it exists in any other, uh, in any other cities for sure. So these, uh, this kind of setting would still appear or not, therefore gentrification would still be there or we, need, we have another dimension of gentrification that is shaping our uh, spatial strength. But what it's sure is that uh, uh, what we have learned up to now, I don't know why I have no particular feeling that could, uh, could still hold. In particular, the having ethnic dimension. The ethnic dimension is, is something very relevant up to now, but nearly in the future, could we still have this problem of ethnic dimension and therefore um, try to, uh, you know, to close settle to people belonging to my ethnicity. And this question is relevant in particular for places outside European Union, in particular in the US or Latin America, that are places that are suffering more from that. If not, if not like that, spatial segregation will still exist. So spatial segregation means that group of people living in a specific places and group of people sharing some features. So would our city or would our regions transform in places in which we have a sort of clustering of workers or clustering of aged people or not? So our spatial segregation would be definitely uh, different. And, and finally, I would say uh, the fact that cities are expected to become more environmental friendly, definitely. But of course, if you become environmental friendly, sometimes this is a cost for accessibility and mobility, in particular, person with reduced uh, mobility. Uh, there is a huge debate, in particular at urban level, with this uh, spreading of use of bicycles and uh, the creation of these uh, bicycle um, uh, ride spaces. You know, with the massive use of these bicycle, bicycle spaces, usually in particular aged people are complaining that there is no clear direct access to their, to their places. So if they have to take a taxi, maybe they have to walk around because the taxi cannot stop in front of their, on their door. Therefore, you know, uh, accessibility still is important, environmental friendly transformation still is important, but of course the, the request for the transformation for the group of people, the aged people, 
are different from the one that uh, are um, for people employed. Okay, so as I was telling you, uh, this part is just more questions and doubts and uh, problems, I think we have to think about from a research viewpoint, in terms of policy viewpoint. And we don't have any specific, I mean, in my view at this moment, we don't have any specific view about that. And what, is, uh, what has been done or have been said up now, um, unfortunately refer basically to employment, which is definitely important, but we see, as I, I, I show you with statistics at the beginning, employment is important, but for our society, uh, also the rest of the other group of population is still very important. And I think we should take care of them. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much for listening to me. And um, I am you know, eager to have your reactions and, you know, open a, a discussion with okay. you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Rosella, for this uh, very interesting and stimulating presentation. Uh, as you know, you can put your questions in the chat or you can also ask to be part of uh, the participant, but I can, and, and then speak uh, to be, you send a message to the host of URSA. Otherwise you send, I have, here we have, uh, Isabel uh, Thomas, who is asking in traditional human geography, location also matters, physical geography, seasides, mountains, environment, climate. Did you consider this for preferences in your model and how far this also modify your future models? Thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Isabel. Uh, yes, so in the, in the research also in the previous model, when we built the preference, uh, the function of preferences, the idea of um, you know, close to the seaside mountains, close to amenity, generally speaking, is still there. Um, and uh, this enter, as, as you can imagine, is a sort of parameter that shape a little bit the, 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 the distribution of the function. Okay, so it's still there, definitely. Uh, the future, the future, um, I don't know, for sure, for sure, I think uh, for the future, there could be this important uh, dimension of uh, being close to the seaside, of being close to the mountains, but also to the lake. Uh, and these, I guess, will have a different way for the group of people you are referring to. So if you have an employment, maybe uh, if you are an employee, maybe this kind of uh, priority it could be important, but not. But if you are, for instance, an aged person, uh, maybe you can have more than that. So in the future, I think that if up to now, this kind of factor could be considered as a standard factor inside and sort of put it the same way for any kind of uh, person or group of persons you are referring to, for the future, I think we have to make a discrimination, discriminate a lot, in particular, we could group of like that. Yeah. There is I was thinking as climate change in this concept. Yeah, is this would definitely the difference. I yes. also have, if I can uh, exploit my position, uh, uh, I would like to ask uh, for a clarification and a question, a doubt. Uh, when you said that the center of a city has a lower over, you have shown that clearly, and this is absolutely fantastic uh, that you, over time, uh, the importance of being close to a city center uh, mm -hmm. with respect to other is, is, is less uh, pronounced. Uh, but my question is, uh, is it relative to other uh, issues? So it means that you, you prefer to be close to your friends or close to a green area with respect to the city center. So it, it, the, the distribution of preferences among assets uh, changes, but, but, and this is what you showed us. But the point is, does this accessibility to the city center keep the most important position? So it is still, the most so relevant it's still, because yes, that's it important. And it's important because it, well, we don't throw away all the theoretical uh, urban economics models uh, from Fontune and Alonso Fujita and so on, because if you arrive to say that the city center uh, accessibility hasn't got any further its 
uh, main role. It's crucial. Problematic. Yeah, that was my first time. Second is no, no, I yes, just, just, sorry, Roberta, just to clarify, maybe we, I was not clear. Yes, so um, it's in relative density, terms. So the distance, the distance is exactly still the relative uh, most okay. important determinant. In the problem, terms, hmm. exactly. The problem is that the size, that usually this is an elasticity. Okay, yeah. so the size of this elasticity basically drops Very over good. time because other elements become more, more and more important, important but not yeah. so important as uh, the, yeah. the distance itself. Uh, and the second point is when you speak about the, the the differences between the difference between population and employment, you you said clearly said that these have to be kept separate because the preferences, the location preferences, are different. Uh, so they, uh, however, by looking at the uh, location preferences that you listed for population, of course they have you you claim. There has to be an accessibility to, uh, for example, health uh, systems yeah, service, and, and exactly. the services, of course, but these are in general in the city centers. Right? But yes, in Europe. So again, we are there. Uh, and also leisure yes. time. No? Uh, so you need, of course, if you are old, uh, but in any case, you go to restaurants and probably you are much more, uh, uh, you can spend more, you have higher income, so you go to most, uh, let's say, expensive restaurants that are in the city centre. So I wonder whether, wh where really this difference is, because in employment is also looking for central locations. So sorry, that's yeah. my point. No, no, but it's a great question. Indeed, it is, is, is a little bit of a point. So, uh, up to now, up to now, so before COVID, let's call it that, uh, you know, the preferences of the old people and the preference of worker could be basically identical in the sense that one wants to go to the city center because it's more to the leisures and whatever it is, and the other because there is a very good health care service. So uh, and from a technical viewpoint, it was easy to put all together because from a technical viewpoint, when you put the preferences, I want to go there, I want to go there. I don't. I don't put the difference why you don't go there. If you want to go there for leisure, or if you want to go there for for work, no problem. So we have these associations of preferences, which is where one important technicality you have to take into account when you model your preferences. Mm -hmm. But all your group go in the same way. Nowadays it's different. Let let put a little bit in a caricatural way. It's not like that. You know, all the people want to stay in the city anyway, because you know, maybe they have delivery home service for, you know, their shopping. And if you go to the country countryside, they have not to be delivered they, they shopping. So they want to stay in the city for them because they have lower there. What happens to worker? A worker now can have a different perspective. Uh, maybe the city center is not so interesting because, for instance, they look for more uh, housing rooms, for instance, and therefore if they stay in the city center, they are gone because it, it's very expensive. And maybe they go out, uh, they may have a preference to locate elsewhere. And so here the point, so after COVID, the fact that we were considering now population and worker, so let, let's simplify, but exaggerate like that. Before now, population and worker, population employment in preference dimension, more or less, was the same. They go to go to the same place. Great. Now I cannot take for granted that. So I cannot take for granted that because one may be have an interest in going to the center, still keeping over there. The other one, yes, maybe I want to go to the cinema once a week, maybe, but it's not my priority. I can also want to stay in a place in a green area in other parts. So okay. when I have to work with preferences, I cannot put like them in the same model. I have to model with two groups with two different preferences, okay. of course, and then relatively check about. That. Okay, so we have other two, three questions, and then we 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 stop. Okay, uh, in demography, um, the uh, for example, uh, UN deserves uh, derives sorry standard uh, fertility distributions against age for applications in context with sparse data. Would you, with your approach to derive model uh, population distribution use, uh, sorry, be useful in similar applications? That's a very technical one. So if you use this- I think so, I think so, because it's, uh, 
I have, I am not, ex I mean, I'm not an expert in demography, so I cannot, uh, I cannot tell you 100% sure. Uh, but I guess so because it's a, a probabilistic, so a probabilistic function, a probabilistic distribution. Uh, so it's a matter of, of shape, the parameter of this function, but, but, yeah. but of course it could be. It could be. Then another question is, are there approaches that measure accessibility of a region in absolute terms, uh, i.e. density of per net transportation network service availability, rather than in relative terms as distance from a point uh, of interest? Uh, uh, you can, so these are in relative term, as we were saying, uh, picking up that uh, the distance from Boston is the most important one. You can transform it into, uh, you know, absolute term, no problem at all. The problem is if I have absolute terms, uh, uh, I am, the problem is that the relative terms allow you to have a spatial structure behind. If you use absolute terms, you don't have a spatial structure. You have just a density of transport, density of whatever. And you know, usually the highest density is in the peripheral regions, peripheral places, because people need to commute, so to guarantee more, more, uh, more, more commuting. And in particular, also the means of transport are different. So, uh, for instance, um, if you go to the periphery outskirts, you have a high density of tube, for instance, a metro tube, and so on. Where you stay in the center, you usually have uh, buses also that overlies metro and uh, but but of course uh, the idea to work with the relative point is exactly to keep the, the spatial structure and to give in this preference yeah so last question from victor uh, i was happy to see your attention in the distinction between population and employment i agree and i think it deserves more attention uh, and enriches our conceptual a conceptualization of what makes cities work, for example. Uh, for example, but what do suspect will happen when WF age uh, becomes more prevalent? Will employment converge with population, or do we need something new? I am going back to what we were discussing. I guess uh, something new should appear uh, because uh, you know working from home uh, will become in particular relevant according to the evidence we have now at hand, in particular for high skilled workers and high skilled jobs, high skilled tasks. Instead of there are some other tasks we stay what got together. But the problem is that um, you know even if. Uh, uh, you are, uh, you know, working from home. Sometimes I know the fact that maybe you fear another lockdown and no, you don't want to stay in a 40 meter quarter flat. You prefer to go out for that and then you don't matter, you commute. So something different could happen independently of what is working. Yeah, from. in fact, the future is really uh, to, to, to come. Eh? Exactly. <laughs> it's really complex uh, to be, exactly. Uh, exactly. especially in this moment of, uh, strong uh, uh, discontinuity. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Mm. exactly. Other question? No, if not, I'd like to thank Rosella again uh, for being with thank us. You today. You. Thank you to really you. And thank you. enjoyed your great presentation. Thank you very thank much. You. I'll see you again. Uh -huh. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to accommodate the presentation. Bye bye. Bye, bye. bye. bye everybody. Bye bye bye. bye.